New day, new creepypasta. This time, we're going into the backstory for Bloody Painter. Now, if I remember correctly, from... Yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. So, there is some kind of relation but uh, there's some kind of relationship going on between Judge Angel and Bloody Painter, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But I guess I think that was pretty much covered already in the Judge Angel uh, backstory, because I highly doubt it would be covered in the Bloody Painter backstory. But no sooner done. Let's get into the stories. All right. I think it's about time we get into the backstory of Bloody Painter. All right, let's get this show on the ro Oh my lord, what the heck? There's so much on this one. Okay, this is going to be a little... Wait, this is a featured article? You are looking at a well-written and an exceptional article. This is a story has been published as a well-written creepypasta file and has received the honor of having such a template reside on it. You can find these pastas in top navigation in the article showcase. Bloody Painter is a fictional serial killer character from the Creepypasta series. The character is featured as the protagonist of a three-part story created by artist Delucat. Since his debut, the Bloody, uh, the Bloody Painter's growing influence has encouraged many related projects and stories to spawn. Man with black hair and blue eyes, he wears a blue jacket with a yellow smiley face pin. He wears leather gloves and a white mask with blackened eyes and a red smile. He is very calm and quiet. He doesn't really smile or speak much, but is very polite. He is very apathetic towards things that don't concern him, and he is a selfish egoist and will always think of himself first. He judges anything by whether it benefits him or not. His parents treat him as a pet and a toy, so this caused him to become extremely repressed. He doesn't show his ap appreciation to people unless somebody did it first. Then will be reciprocate. Then will he reciprocate. He is very calculating of other people's deeds, but when a bigger benefit appears, he dares to betray. He dares to betray- oh no. He lacks gender and moral consciousness, however he is still smart and manipulative. Basically he is a double-faced jerk with the front of a gentleman. As a criminal he is extremely cautious of criminal scene aesthetics and every murder will be metic uh, meticulously done like a piece of artwork. The mediums he uses and the methods he enforces are extreme, making him a crazy artist. On January 13th of 1994, a classmate of his fell from the school building and died. This student happened to be his one and only friend. According to a witness account, Otis was the culprit behind the student's death, but no lawsuits could be made due to the lack of concrete evidence. Later, on October 30th of the same year, Otis committed a massacre in his school dorm, resulting in 17 deaths and 5 wounded people. Following the lawsuit, the jury's verdict decided that Otis was not guilty by reasons of insanity and was promptly sent to a psychiatric hospital for treatment and recovery. On March 10, uh, 2001, Otis was released from the hospital to re-enter re society only to commit another series of murder in late 2003 before disappearing. Otis was born on October 1st! Oh, happy late birthday! Uh, happy late birthday, bloody painter! This video is supposed to be going up on October 15th. So happy birthday. Otis was born on October 1st, 1980. His childhood was spent under the pressure of parents, of parents' high expectations and control since parents had hoped for a daughter and not a son, they decided to treat Otis like a girl by giving him a female name and dressing him up like a girl. Ugh. Can't control that. 
Can't control what gender your kid's gonna be. The treatment continued until he was six years old when he started attending school and the parents began dressing him up like a boy to avoid attention. Due to this alter alteration, Otis's emotional distress began building up. On the night of October 30th, 1994, Otis began a massacre in his dorm, killing 17 and wounding 5. The victims of the killing are all students from his class. Due to the large number of casualties, the police suspected the involvement of accomplices in the murder. 2003 murder case. On October 31st, a security camera captures a footage of a masked figure killing a pedestrian, which is uploaded onto the internet. Weeks later, on November 17th, residents reported to the police about a strong, rotting smell from Otis's residence that had persisted for several days. Following an investigation in the house, the police discovered five corpses, all hung upside down. The corpse's blood was already dry. Next to the corpses were also numerous paintings and grotesque sculptures made with the corpse's blood and body parts, respectively. Otis was also nowhere to be found in the house. Later, the police department confiscated all of the artworks and restricted the house for further investigation. As of now, as of now there are still no leads to Otis's current whereabouts. History of events. Oh my lord. Uh, January 13th, 1994, Otis's classmate fell from his school building and died. A witness stated that Otis was the culprit behind his classmate's fall, but no lawsuit was made due to the lack of evidence. Wait, what is this picture right here? Judy George, 24, went missing on October of 20, uh, 2003 and was found in Otis's residence a month later. Her corpse hung upside down. Okay. Yikes. Uh, October 30th, 1994, Otis committed a massacre in a storm, resulting in 17 deaths and 5 injured. Yep. November 15th, 1994, Otis was vo voted not guilty, reasons of insanity, and was transferred to a psychiatric hospital for treatment. Fair. March 10th, 2003, Otis was released from the hospital, seemingly recovered. October 31st, 2003, a security camera captures a footage of Otis committing another murder, which was uploaded to the internet. November 17th, 2003, local police department received reports of a persisting rotting stench coming from Otis's old residence, leading to the discovery of five corpses, with Otis nowhere to be found. So official stories, we have Story of Bloody Painter Creepypasta, that's the original story. We have Bloody, uh, Bloody Painter prequel and Bloody Painter on the sh on the snow. Animatic? Wait, is there like some kind of animation at the beginning? October 31st, 2018. Uh, I feel like that should be a little bit disturbed. External links, forget that. Videos? You know. Here's a few pieces of fan art for Bloody Painter, so first off you have this one right here. This is actually this actually looks good, yeah. Just look at this right here. That looks really well. Cause if you go back to appearance, blue jacket with a yellow smiley face pin. Yep. There's the smiley face pin, and there's this mask right there. Uh, the coloring of the picture makes it seem like it's red, uh, black eyes and black mouth, but it's supposed to be black eyes with red mouth, like it is in this one right, right here. This this one looks good too. So you got the leather gloves. You got you can actually see the black holes for eyes, and then the red smile on the mask. Yeah, and there's the smiley face pin. I think out of all these, I'd have to say this one is probably my more favorite one. Alright. 
yeah, this is definitely my favorite. Just don't know. Sometimes there are times where I'm confused on the reasoning behind these uh, the killing. But status of life, hobby killing people. It says hobby killing people. Goals unknown. That's what confuses me the most. He doesn't have a specified goal. Plus, wouldn't the killing people thing be uh, also like to make art out of out of his victims? Because it did say in the uh, the thing where where is it? Uh, numeral paint. Yeah, here it is. Corpses were also numerous paintings and grotesque sculptures make, made with the blood and body parts, respectively. So I have a feeling that should have been in the hobby section as well. Don't understand that. This, we got this picture of the one of the victims. Bloody painter's residence restricted for police investigation. Yeah, this one right here, yep. Portrait of Otis, right here. Wanted poster for Ellen Otis. Yep. Hey, you. Yes, you. Behind the camera. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Hey, this entire month of October 2022, there's going to be one creepypasta video a day throughout the entire month. So, if you don't want to miss the chance of catching the next one being uploaded, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Ring the bell for notification. And if you really liked this video, make sure to leave a like on the video as well. Put a comment down below, tell me what you thought of it. But other than that, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.